Some foods are not digested and absorbed by the small intestine, and so reach the large intestine, also known as the colon. Resistant starch, for example, is a portion of starch that escapes digestion in the small intestine because it is resistant to human digestive enzymes. However, resistant starch still contain energy that our body needs. And so, once resistant starch reaches the colon, the resistant starch will undergo fermentation by the trillions of bacteria that live there. Through fermentation, the bacteria produce substances, such as short-chain fatty acids, which our colon cells use as their main source of energy. In this video, we will focus on the process of starch fermentation. Starch that has resisted digestion in the small intestine and reached the colon are called resistant starch. Resistant starch will undergo fermentation by bacteria in the colon. Resistant starch are made up of amylose and amylopectin, which are two forms of glucose polymers. Fermentation of carbohydrates such as resistant starch lead to the production of short-chain fatty acids. Let us look at a simple pathway of how these short-chain fatty acids are produced. Now within the colon, you have primary degraders of resistant starch, such as bifidobacterium species, bacteroides species, and ruminococcus bromide. The primary degraders have enzymes that are important in breaking down resistant starch and fermenting it. Many products are produced through the fermentation of resistant starch by the primary degraders. Glucose can be released thanks to membrane-bound enzymes that cleave off glucose polymers. Through fermentation of glucose, these primary degraders can produce the 2-carbon short-chain fatty acid, acetate, and release formate in the process. Formate is essentially gases, carbon dioxide and hydrogen. These can later be used by other bacterial species that live in the colon. Through the fermentation of glucose, the primary degraders can also produce the three carbon short chain fatty acid called propionate, which also forms some gases as a byproduct. Now, succinate and lactate are also produced um, by these primary degraders and are efficiently utilized by certain anaerobic bacteria. The gases formed through fermentation, such as formate, can be utilized by methanogens to produce methane. Interesting fact, methane and other gases, such as carbon dioxide and hydrogen, contribute to the chemistry of fat and its smell. Because these gases are produced in the lumen of the colon, they are often expelled out. Also, if there is sufficient amounts of formate, acetogens are able to utilize formate to produce acetate. Now back to the degraders. There are another set of bacteria called the secondary degraders that also contribute to the fermentation of resistant starch. However, the secondary degraders are considered to have no enzymes that initiate the cleavage of glucose from the glucose polymers that make up resistant starch. And so the secondary degraders, such as the Firmicute species, rely on the primary degraders to release glucose monomers. The Firmicute species can utilize the glucose and ferment it to produce a 4-carbon short-chain fatty acid called butyrate. Some of the secondary degraders can also utilize acetate to produce butyrate as an end product. So through the fermentation of starch, acetate, propionate, and butyrate are the main short-chain fatty acids produced, normally in a 3 to 1 to 1 ratio. 
so more acetate being produced. At a low pH, about 5.5, butyrate producing bacteria are known to dominate the colon. However, at a slightly higher pH, about 6.5, acetate and propionate producing bacteria dominate and butyrate producing bacteria seem to be less prominent. From the lumen, these short chain fatty acids are absorbed by the colon. They're absorbed by the colon epithelial cells, known simply as colonocytes. About 95% of the short chain fatty acids are rapidly absorbed by the colon cells, while the remaining 5% are excreted in the feces. After being absorbed by the colon cells, the short chain fatty acids can enter circulation and enter the portal vein, which is blood traveling towards the liver. Here, propionate and acetate enter the portal blood. Butrate, on the other hand, is the major energy source for colon cells, resulting in low concentrations of butrate in portal blood. Now let's briefly uh, find out the fates of the short-chain fatty acids. So acetate is the principal short-chain fatty acid in the colon. It is metabolized in peripheral tissues. In the liver, Acetate has shown to stimulate lipogenesis, the synthesis of fats. Acetate is also the primary substrate for cholesterol synthesis. Propionate travels to the liver and is used as a substrate for gluconeogenesis. Butyrate is the preferred fuel for colon cells. About 75% of energy for colon cells come from butyrate. And because of this, there are lower amounts of butyrate in the blood compared to the other short-chain fatty acids. In the liver, butyrate is oxidized, preventing toxic systemic concentrations. And that concludes this video. We looked at starch fermentation and how fermentation of resistant starch by bacteria produce short-chain fatty acids such as acetate, propionate, and butyrate, all of which have many effects on human health and disease.